So to walk us through the equally interesting uniform manufacturing industry is one whose longevity in the business is marked by consistency, reliability, and dependability. Thus, to reshape the uniform manufacturing landscape is to be sensitive to the changing demands of clients and the challenges of globalization. She is one of the strong advocates in the launch of the Natural Fabrics R&D program of PTRI way back in 2002. And this eventually paved the way for the enactment of RA 9242. Behind PTRI and the PTF, and the proud owner of exclusive apparel, Ms. Olive Ang. Good morning, or should I say, magandang tanghati sa inyong lahat. I am Olive Ang, a manufacturer of office uniforms for the past 33 years. I started when I was 12. And for those of you like, who would care to do the math, you would know that this is fake news. So, this is where fake news ends and then the truth begins. May I ask for your indulgence as I present to you my client list and the number of years that I have serviced each client. Um, the banking sector is my niche. So I have Metro Bank, my client, every year since 1989, BDO since every year since 2003, China Bank since 19, every, 1989, and it goes on. So I think I can say with confidence that I know the industry quite well. Thank you. We are all here because of the Tela story. I will try to determine how many yards in a year the uniform industry needs. And if this is attractive enough for investors to put their money in. So the next frame, please. These are the wearers of office uniforms. Of course, the armed forces, service and sales workers, technicians and professionals. We have plant workers. And of course, we should not forget students who wear uniforms. And the number of students who wear uniforms is 27.7 million. So if we add all of these numbers, next frame, please. Um, we have several sectors in the workforce and only five sectors use uniforms. So, we look at these numbers, there are 41.3 laborers or the workforce and um, only 30.8 sectors that will wear uniforms, that's 27 million people wear uniforms every year, 27.7 students. So I will take first for the workforce, 27.7 million, that's an average of 10 yards per year. This is on an assumption that this is a Monday to Friday uniform, and 10 yards is a very, very conservative number. That would mean 127 million yards per year. Add to, because these are all fabric requirements, children who are in school, 27.7 million times a very conservative five yards, because high school students would need more than five yards. That would be a total of 138 million yards. So per year, you look at an average of 265 million yards for fabric requirements alone. This should, this is a staggering number. And this should be enough incentive for the industry um, to have more people interested in investing it again. And of course, we have to be reminded that the population is steadily increasing so these numbers increase every year. So I think it is quite a, mad, a big number to deal with. So we hope that the textile industry will flourish. And it has always been the advocacy of a group named Duty Moda, which was established in 2002. 
I was president of this team of hardworking uniform manufacturers who sought to be relevant and believe that one, local indigenous and tropical materials make attractive corporate wear with a truly Filipino flavor, the country can grow a competitive and healthy industry. This is 2002, and please take note of the designs that we created in 2002. I would say to this day, these designs are relevant and acceptable. This is made out of kumon. This is made out of Adel. Unimoda worked hard to promote Senator Herrera's MC20. MC20 encouraged all government corporations and agencies to make use of locally manufactured fabrics for uniforms. Unimoda took active promotion of designing uniforms and indigenous materials. We scoured the Ilocos area from markets to weavers to look for a belt Ilocos fabrics that were interesting. The Ilocos governor supported the efforts and helped donate materials for exhibits, fashion shows, beauty contests, and magazine features. At that time, practical and stylish design for everyday wear in indigenous fabrics was practically unheard of. Unimoda designers, headed by Ricky Flores, who is here right now. Ricky, please say hi. <laughs> Never ran out of creative ideas creating corporate wear in Abel Iloco. To quote Ching Alano in her Philippine Star article of 2003, she said, yes, the uniform need not look as pale as last year's fashion, or as drab as office furniture. Indeed, Unimoda promises diversity in uniforms, adding up to the minute pizzazz to the otherwise stiff corporate wear. And to prove my point that this was unheard of in 2003, Ching Alano adds, Unimoda delivers its coup de grace via the lowly network. Um, I, I think it was the picture after this, or the picture before this. Um, you'd be heading straight from bedroom to boardroom and stuff. This is Ching Alano's article. Can I see the next one? Those are the Abel Ilocos fabrics that were part of the fashion show. Maybe after. <laughs> or in Austin. Anyway, let me go to tropical fabrics. Because of the need for continuing research, our, our chairperson then, the late Juan Gavino, went to the DOST to inquire about whatever help the DOST could give us. DOST referred us to the Philippine Textile and Research Institute. And this is where the <coughs> Unimoda and PTRI story began. We discovered a treasure trove of beautiful fabrics from PTRI's R&D. PTRI had been developing tropical fabrics mixed with polyester, banana, pineapple, and a baka. The fabrics retained a lovely sheen. It was lightweight, wrinkle-free, and more especially, it did not require special care. It was perfect for office uniforms. We brought these lovely beauties for everyone to see. Unimoda launched a baka, pineapple, and banana fibers as corporate wear in the MC20 and Tabuhayan exhibit at the Intercontinental. Other than just showcasing these fabrics in exhibits and shows, I did a test run and I did the corporate uniforms of the major officers of the bank in these materials. The demand and interest was unprecedented. However, sadly, the supply ran low. As added assistance for the cost of PTRI and, and um, indigenous fabrics, we brought finished products to Europe and we noted sure interest in the people that we met with. We went to London, we went to 
Paris, we brought the samples, and um, the people in the consular office were very interested and wanted to have these fabrics at that time. During this time, Unimoda unceasingly lobbied for the passage of RA 9242, which mandated that the government institutions use indigenous or tropical fabrics for uniforms. In 2004, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo signed this into law. And Unimoda's cause was won. Um, as I look today at today's fashion, it is clear that indigenous materials has found itself in mainstream fashion. A belt Ilogo fabric is made into dresses, jackets, from corporate wear to evening wear. The new breed of designers collaborate with tribes in Fugao, Bipol, Mindanao to do weaving, beadwork in clothes, shoes, or bags. I can say that with I can say with confidence that for personal wear, Indigenous has come of age. And I feel sorry in many ways that we have somewhat drifted apart with PTRI because of the challenges of work, but maybe it's good time for us to be able to reconnect again. While we have succeeded in the arena of bringing consciousness to tropical fabrics and to indigenous fabrics, we, in the uniform industry, have to reckon with the challenges the uniform industry is facing. These are stiff competition, diminishing margins, and dependable deadlines of fabric availability. Truth is, it does not require great capital to enter the uniform industry. Setting up a, sharp, a starter shop to cater initially to small clients does not require great capital. For as long as you have good ideas, you have good marketing strategies, you can offer your services to a client. The competition is very fierce. The newcomers give low prices, while old timers find retaining the price of so many ways the only way to keep a client. I can tell you that I have a client of nine years. For the past nine years, they have not added a single centavo to the budget that they have been paying me for the past nine years. And that is with certain feet and truth. Thus, we have the scenario of diminishing margins. We contend with rising labor costs, a stronger, a weak, a stronger dollar, more expensive rent, and expensive of supplies. You can say that this stiff competition is something that we bring upon ourselves, but there is no way we can control the dollar costs. Um, that's beyond our strengths. So we have to deal with what we have to deal with, and what happens really is that the costs and the margin, the costs have risen and the margins have diminished. And the issue of undependable deadlines of fabric availability is another matter. It does not take 60 days to have a fabric order. It takes sometimes 30 days. I'm sorry, it takes 60 days, sometimes 90 days, or sometimes even more before the materials get released from clusters. And this is actual cost because production is delayed. And sometimes we have to pay penalties for our delays. We were thinking, if we get cheaper raw materials from fabrics made in the Philippines, if the fabrics were sourced and milled in our countries, if we can ship on shipment costs, if we can pass through paying brokers' fees and custom duties, then perhaps our 9242's implementation could give relief my industry that is looking at very narrow margins. I long for the commercialization of the beautiful fabrics developed by PTRI. I look forward to the collaboration of PTRI, which is basically an R&D group with other government agencies like the FIDA, PTI, to see R9242 fly. So far, it has yet to take off. The success of this endeavor will only then 
change the landscape of the universe.